Special edition of PFTPM, which, by the way, debuts on Peacock in September. For now, it's the old-fashioned way. Video on PFT, audio on podcast. Joining us today, the brand-new president of the Washington football team. He is former NFL player, but now anything but a player, anything but a guy on the football side of the operation. He is in charge of the business side of the operation as the president of the team, Jason Wright. Jason, it's great to talk to you. How are you, pal? Oh, it's a pleasure to be on, and I'm glad you already got that clear message. That's good. <laughs> oh, I've, hey, I know you've been out and making the media rounds, and I've been doing my homework, and that's the one message that comes through. And, you know, it's odd to me for a guy who was a player to be back in as – somebody who has no role on the football side. It reminds me almost of the Pat Summerall, Frank Gifford, guy who gets into broadcasting and becomes a play-by-play announcer, not a Keller commentator, which is typically the job of the former player. So this is a new frontier altogether. Congratulations on it, and it's great to talk to you. Well, you know, if you you talk to, you know, my former coaches and teammates, and then you talk to folks I worked with in business, they'd probably say, like, yeah, put Jason on the business side. (laughs) (laughs) Put Jason on the business side of things with relative relative capabilities. But, um, no, I'm excited um, uh, to be a part of the team at what I, you know, describe as a unique moment where, you know, the ownership – has both in word and deed, Dan and Tanya have, in word and deed have indicated a new direction. Um, and that new direction really aligns with my values um, and my vision for what a healthy organization looks like. So, you know, I'm really excited to jump in. Well, and what's amazing about this, Jason, you know, I've been in this business 20 years now. You generally are aware of the universe of people who are looking to get certain jobs, who are angling for certain positions, especially the former players. There aren't a lot of things that a former player can do in football, and it's typically coaching, front office, agents, Mm -hmm. right? You rarely see a former player aspire to be in a football operation only in a business capacity, and I think a lot of us were stunned by it. Mm -hmm. Um, How long has this even been on your radar screen that it's something you wanted to do? Yeah, I can talk from my my personal aspirations this this materialized a bit miraculously for me, frankly. It wasn't what I was angling towards. Um, I was really happy as a partner at my firm. I uh, felt like I had a great platform to do research on the things I cared about, serve the type of companies that excited me and counsel CEOs the way I wanted to. Um, but this was a unique moment where my identity as a football player from seven years old uh, all the way through to the NFL and being a team captain combined with my analytic mind and serving businesses over time came together in a unique way um, and it just popped up. Um, but for me, like you know, just to give a little insight, um, I don't tend to have a, a Machiavellian plan <laughs> about uh, the roles that I'll have or where I'll be. I'm not building a kingdom. Um, I'm a bit of a nerd. I'm driven by my intellectual curiosity and I'm attracted to big challenges um, and big challenges within organizations that have real impact uh, across society and in the place where they're located. And this absolutely hits all those criteria for me. And that's what makes this even more unusual from my perspective. Most of the people who are in the big jobs in the NFL wanted those big jobs, aspired to those big jobs and did everything they could to get them. It sounds like you're just minding your own business. Opportunity knocks and you decided to answer. Yeah, I mean, that's a bit of it. You know, Um, I'm grateful that all the tools and the preparation were there for me along the way. Um, You know, there's a lot I'm going to learn still, too, though. You know, let's be clear about that. Um, but yeah, it, it did it did materialize, and and, and in one sense, um, uh, I'm excited about that. <laughs> I'm excited about that that I haven't been ruminating on this for years um, because I think coming to it with a set of fresh eyes, a set of unique capabilities, and uh, things in my toolkit that might not be brought if I were thinking about this for a long time or brought up in the front office, is what's going to catalyze new ideas and new innovation on the business side. And then you know I'll be held in bounds and anchored by the great expertise that we already have on the team. So. Now, I'm looking forward to that sort of catalytic combination. Now that you're in the position, Jason, do you have a timetable in mind, a rough deadline in mind for getting the organization to where you think it needs to be? How long of a task is that? You know, um, it's hard to tell because I don't start till Monday, right? So I've got outside information just like you. I just got my email. Well, I'll get my email up and running soon, right? Um, uh, But uh, depending on where we're at, um, we're where we're actually at. Um, it, it, it's to be determined how quickly we get to the, the, the finish line. But I know the type of culture we want to set 
and I know the type of things that we want to aspire to do. Um, and I've shared this before, but the culture is one that's rooted in principles like inclusion and transparency, openness, accountability. Um, and, you know, we're in the middle of an, an independent investigation that's going to tell us a lot about where we're at on sexual harassment um, and, the, and the, the work environment that we're creating around our colleagues. Um, I'm going to find out a lot about where we are in innovation around fan engagement, the fan experience, where we are in thinking about a new stadium. These are all big priorities um, that uh, that will reshape who we are as, a, as an institution and as a club. Um, but I, I know where we're going to get to. Um, we're going to get to being highly innovative, uh, integrating great technologies, um, being the best in fan engagement with a great fan base that already exists. Um, we'll find out pretty soon how long it is. But I'll tell you, I have a 100-day plan in my head, but we ain't, we're not going to be there in 100 days. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. Is this a situation where at some point, if you get the organization to where you think it needs to be, you simply say, and, and I hate to say this, you haven't even started yet, but I almost feel like there's a chance you get to the point where the organization is exactly where it needs to be. You say, hey, my work here is done. It's on to my next challenge. Or is this something that you intend to stick with even after you get it to where you want it to be? What I will say is I am very grateful for the confidence <laughs> And, the, and, and from your mouth to God's ears that we will be there exactly where I want us to be. Um, I think in the little bit of the way I think about this is, uh, you know, I'm, I'm in this for a longer term commitment um, because I see several echelons to the organization. I keep a little bit of in the back of my mind because I don't know what I don't know yet. Um, but there are so many ways that this organization can evolve into something, um, an entity of greater and greater impact. There's a, there's a get things right now piece. There's an establish a new identity um, that involves the name and the brand, but it's so much bigger than that. There's a, a, a redesigned fan experience that you know, incorporates all the cool things that are happening around us in this, this rapid evolution into a more digital future that COVID has actually brought on. There's a new stadium and a complex. All that is like stuff that's in view, but there are things even beyond that of thinking about how we, we might be a, a real anchor institution in the DMV, what we do for the broader community, um, you know, how uh, life in the DMV area can center more around the franchise and what we've become um, for various aspects of the community. There's so many things in my head of where this could go. Um, I don't, I'm not looking for an exit door, I'll tell you that much. And you've made it clear that you will be reporting directly to owner Daniel Snyder, Ron Rivera, the head coach, reporting directly to owner Daniel Snyder. When did you first meet Daniel Snyder? Yeah, um, gosh, it, uh, people keep asking this. I really should like write down the timeline. My wife is the one who remembers stuff like this. I should ask her. Um, but it's, it's it's fairly recent. You know, it's uh, you know it's since the since the name was rescinded is after that. In fact, I remember I was reading all that news before our networks crossed, and our networks crossed, and we started this series of conversations that I've I've been describing as surprising. Um, you know, conversations that were. Eventually, we talked about business and stuff like that, like I'm sharing with you now, but it, they were initially rooted in values, um, like the words I shared, inclusion, transparency, et cetera. Uh, and they were really open, like, you know, sharing really vulnerable stories of mistakes that we had each individually made in past business decisions and in life, how we gained wisdom from that, hopefully, uh, how we gained wisdom from that and how that shaped how we're thinking about things now for the club. and. Um, you know, it was a really rapid process, but very in-depth. We spent a whole lot of time together, myself, Dan, and Tanya, and even Coach Rivera. And at the end of that, we all felt super aligned and very excited about working together. And I, I, I asked that question about how long you've actually known Daniel Snyder, because there will be people who look at the last 21 years, who look at the culture that has been in place under the leadership and ownership of Daniel Snyder, and say, and I, you know, I have to be blunt, I have to be candid, this is what people will say. He's the problem. He's the common link. He's the reason why the organization is the way it is. How much of that do you, I don't want to say do you think is true, but how much of that talk are you aware of? And how did you personally come to the conclusion that he is someone you want to work with and that you believe he genuinely is looking to have a different organization than what it's been over the past two decades? Yeah, you know, I'll give you three three ways that I approach that. Uh, the first is um, in conversations like this and meeting new folks, especially that you're going to work closely with. I tend to be um, uh, quick to listen and a bit slow to speak. And and in listening, you learn a ton about somebody. 
the way they think, their core values. And, and I've outlined, um, you know, over the series of those conversations, um, what came out in conversations with Dan and Tanya um, were things that really resonated with me, that, that hit my core, uh, that were, you know, in a, in a way surprisingly aligned with how I see the world and how I see the club um, and how I see the role of football in society, frankly. Um, secondarily, I am not shy about asking very straightforward questions. Um, I ask them dispassionately. There's no judgment on answers. Um, and, um, and actually, uh, Dan and Tanya are quite similar. <laughs> they asked me very direct questions. Um, and, uh, and that was great as well. And I also asked uh, to talk to people who knew them really well and who didn't actually have necessarily any equities, uh, uh, in, in, uh, no dog in the fight, so to speak. And I got to know people that knew them really well. And I asked targeted poignant questions there too. Um, and so can you ever be certain? Um, can they be certain about me? A hundred percent? Nope. Can I be a hundred percent certain about them? Nope. But we sure as hell feel certain about starting this journey together. Um, and, and I'm excited about it. There's nothing but positivity in my mind. Now, from Daniel Snyder's perspective, as it relates to being in the organization during this turnaround, how often do you think he'll actually be there sleeves rolled up, working, or will it be you who's in the organization day in and day out as the primary business employee to complement Ron Rivera as the primary football employee? It's certainly the latter. You know, uh, it's Ron's show on the football side. It's my show on the business side. It's super clear between the two of us. It's super clear to Dan and Tanya. Um, we've been given that autonomy. Um, and I think you've actually seen that play out on the football side. If you want evidence, um, the way that the draft went down, the way that the team has been assembled, the decisions that have been made on the team side, Coach Rivera's made those, right? Um, and so, you know, all I can take is the evidence at hand. Uh, so I expect it to be exactly the same. And that's what we're all agreed on. Uh, that said, um, you know, Dan isn't one of these billionaires that inherited a bunch of money. Let's be clear. <laughs> He's a smart guy. Um, and as we've talked, I've gotten to know the areas where he has particularly good expertise and passion. Um, and to say you don't want him engaged on those topics is foolish. It's foolish. I want that man's brain on those topics. It's going to make us a better franchise. It's going to expand our value. It's going to make us more creative in the way that we operate. And so um, you know, he's not going to be just, you know, sitting in his house, uh, seeing how things go, but most certainly the way in which they are engaged on either side of the organization is up to me and coach Rivera. As you've gotten to know him, have you come to the conclusion that, you know, the things that are out there from a reputational standpoint, that he's misunderstood, that he has grown and evolved past whatever may have happened in the past, or, uh, it just was flat out wrong. It's just that's just not the way he is, that the reputation isn't warranted. Yeah, I'm probably not grounded enough in the external reputation. And frankly, I don't necessarily want to be, um, you know, I, I don't know. I mean, you've, you've been you've been in you know a high media spotlight for some time. Um, you know, I was in the league for a long time. I remember acutely that the impression that was often out there externally could be quite different than what actually existed. We used to say in the locker room, in the family. For you in the, in the broadcasting community, it's probably quite similar. Um, and so uh, I actually try not to anchor myself in that. I don't ignore it, but I try not to anchor myself in that. Um, you know, one of my principles as a leader in general is to be fact-based. I'm gonna take in the facts. Um, and uh, you know, outside in, three people removed opinions don't tend to be particularly fact-based. Um, and so, you know, uh, I'm going to learn for myself, I think. <laughs> I'll put it that way. Now you're stepping into a situation, Jason, where there's a certain amount of palace intrigue. It has nothing to do with the football team, but depending upon how it goes, it could affect in some way the football operation. And that is the dynamic, the reported and confirmed multiple times over of the limited partners, the minority owners mm -hmm. wanting out and also this litigation that's been playing out for the last couple of weeks, where when you read between the lines, it's pretty clear that Daniel Snyder believes possibly one or more of the minority owners behind trying to get some negative information out there, maybe in an effort to bring him down and force him to sell. You're going to find yourself in the middle of that. Mm -hmm. what, what is your role going to be as it relates to whatever it is that may be going on between 
the ma- majority owner and the minority owners? Yeah, this is a really good and actually really complex question. I'm, I'm glad you raised it. And the way you raised it actually is unique to how I've heard it before. So let me disaggregate it. Um, and maybe it's oversimplified, but this is how I've been thinking about it, Mike. There are two aspects to this. There is uh, the existing allegations around sexual harassment, which are to be taken seriously. And I'm very happy about the first step that the Snyders took to bring in an independent investigator. Um, as I said before, you know, I'll find out if it's better or worse than I perceive it to be outside in based on public information. But that's actually something that I know well. I've helped other organizations move through this. And depending on what the facts are, I know the three to four paths to getting this right. Um, and so that's one that while it is big and serious and maybe messy, depending on what it actually is, um, I know how to steer us there. And I know the culture we'll have on the other side around that issue. That's clear. The one that is more nebulous and I think a bit more removed from me and my role is whatever is going on with the ownership. And in that one, I have a very simplified view that no matter what is going on, and I'm not sure that I actually need to know exactly what's going on, whatever is going on, if me and the business side of the house are focused on expanding the value of the franchise, engaging fans, getting our culture right, engaging fans substantively and frequently, redesigning the fan experience, getting this new identity in place that's gonna drive value, doing this stadium in a both operationally efficient and aspirational and revenue generating sort of way, if we grow the pie, that does nothing but help whatever is going on. That does nothing but help. Um, Everybody will be slightly happier in whatever is going on if we expand the value of the franchise. And so that's one where it is not within my control. And so I'm gonna do what I did in football and that's control what you can control. And I'm gonna be laser focused on what my role is. And, And I think that's a great explanation, Jason, but there's a flip side to it. If in your role, you're monitoring, you're aware of, you're learning things about this separate issue, however it plays out, and you get to a point where you conclude subjective, uh, subjectively, excuse me, uh, and authentically that it's affecting your job, that it's affecting your ability to make the franchise as good as it can be. Do you feel like you'll be able? And I know this is a hypothetical on type. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was about to say, that's, yeah, there's a few it, it can happen. It can happen. Where yeah. you may have to go to the owner and say, hey, we need to drop this lawsuit. Hey, we need to make this go away. We need to find somebody else to come in and buy these shares. I mean, how much of that will be within your purview to say the existence of this thing, this squabble, this fight is keeping me from doing my job the right way? Yeah, I mean, I, I feel like there, my brother, there are enough near term things to tackle <laughs> for me to be war gaming for before I start war gaming the, you know, hypotheticals down multiple paths. There are so many of those. Um, but, you know, I want to I'll take your question in, in earnest. But you know what um, I'm saying, though? I mean, yeah, I no, I know. I hear, no, I hear what you're saying, brother. I hear what you're saying. So I, so I think the the thing that the only thing I can say about that now, because, again, I'm super fact based and it's hard for me to dimensionalize that in a fact based way. What I say is. I know I have an open channel with Dan and Tanya. I expect to establish good communication channels with the rest of the ownership. I have a great open channel of communication with Coach Rivera. Um, And if open channels of communication are in place, if people understand and recognize my agendaless intent within those open channels, then I expect everything will sort itself out. But, you know, it's tempting to move into the hypotheticals. It is very soap opera-esque. I'm going to resist and I'm going to focus on the things we need to do now, which, you know, there's enough on the plate. Well, I have another hypothetical for you and then I'll let you go. And I appreciate so much of your time today. The way that the things happened with the name change, initially the decision to change the name once the new name is determined, and then the decision to go with Washington football team as the placeholder for some undetermined period of time until the new name can be selected. I got a theory. Okay. And 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 I, I feel like it's working. The name is working. The uniforms are awesome. My theory is this. If the team does well this year, that name's not going away anytime soon. That's a more limited and narrow hypothetical. But can you see a set of facts where the end result is, you know what? We're, we're good with Washington football team. We're good with this look. We're going to ride it out for a few more years. Yeah, I mean, all things all things are on the table, and I think that's perfectly fair. That's actually, you know, again, to your point, a much more narrow hypothesis and fair. Like, it could absolutely go that path. But I think uh, along that way, we're going to be engaging fans substantively. 
We're going to be engaging players substantively, sponsors, the staff. And, and, and frankly, and I don't have it quite in my head yet. I know our marketing team has thought through this much more than me, given I'm you know, in day negative four or whatever it is. Um, but engaging the DMV, the leaders and influencers in the DMV community more broadly are going to have input on that as well. But yeah, that could absolutely be the pace. I mean, I, you know, there's a little bit into into me that people will find out a lot, and you'll follow. You, if you if you actually scroll my Twitter, you'll see that I'm quite the uh, European football fan um, in the background. And that's that's a perfectly fine name, right? In that in that world, it's a perfectly fine name in that world. So it's not anathema to me, but it's not going to be my decision by any means. It's going to be a community based decision, and and we'll see where we land. Well, it's amazing where things are. You know, just a few weeks ago, I feel like the organization was in one of the lowest points that any NFL team has been in in recent years. And just something happened. Bottom was struck and the digging process began quickly and earnestly. And here we are. And uh, I applaud you on number one, getting the job. Number two, wanting the job. And I wish you all the best going forward. I hope we can have a clear line of communication. Yeah. It'll be interesting to see what happens. You know, this is a crazy upside down year, like 1982 and like 1987. And we know what happened <laughs> in both of those seasons for the Washington football team. So, you know, I, I, can, I just have a sense good things are coming. And your uh, arrival is just another piece of that puzzle. And we wish you all the best. And we hope to talk to you down the road. Thanks. Jake. My good vibes well received, my brother. Thank you. All right. Take care. All right. All right, that's Jason Wright. This is PFTPM. We'll be back with another episode. Remember, coming September, every weekday on Peacock. We'll see you all again real soon. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.